Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to talk about some industry driven architecture for digital control IC in high frequency switch mode power converter. In this lecture, we want to specifically link that whatever we learn uh, you know so far the digital control architecture. If we go for power management IC, should it be those architecture or do you need fully digital or do you need mix signal or do you need analog with digital control assistance like you know housekeeping arrangement. So, some aspect we will discuss. So, we will discuss key digital control architecture and power management integrated circuit implementation aspect, broad application of digital PMIC, then example of digital control for server application and digital control for envelope tracking application. So, if you say consider few low power application for power management IC, one is the wearable device, then SOC, then IoT, automotive, there are many more applications, but what we want to keep in mind? For example, if you take the wearable device, the power level is very, very low. You know, for SOC application, the power level is slightly higher, but automotive, you can have even higher current application and the server application, computing application. So, the power level drastically varies and you may have n number of digital control architecture, you know, the level of digitization for different applications. If you start with our digital voltage mode control that you have discussed in lecture 71 to 75. Now, how can we make a high frequency digital control, voltage mode control, power management IC, where the power is a constant, we cannot afford to have let us say ADC. That means, it will be expensive or it can be power hungry, the silicon area can increase, but we still need to support. For example, if you go for wireless sensor network power management, where whenever you are sending data, then the power supply voltage level should be higher and when it is in the idle mode, the voltage level has to be reduced so that it will save dynamic power. So, this is particularly for dynamic power saving, dynamic power saving. So, this can be applicable in I would say mobile phone, uh, then wireless sensor network, wireless sensor network then portable application, other portable application, etc., where the saving power is very, very important. And for such application, the reference voltage, if we keep the voltage loop purely in analog, which is existing product, have n number of solution of very high frequency, very power efficient. Now, we can add a very slow rate DAC which for primarily for housekeeping arrangement, housekeeping digital. That means, here we are generating VREP from DAC and where the input to the DAC will come from processor or the sensor network that you need to raise the voltage level of the converter and the control loop will simply respond. So, in such application, you may not need a full fledged ADC, but suppose if you are going for uh, industrial application. So, suppose if we have multiple, I would say multiple DC DC converter, then you can have one ADC for many buck converter or boost converter and this can be used in time multiplex mode, where the core ADC time multiplex mode, where the time multiplex, the core ADC may be 1, but we can have an analog multiplexer. So, that way we can save uh, power, we do not need even the delay, because we have discussed in lecture number 1 and 2 that there are challenges in digital control in terms of cost, in terms of power and all. If you keep the main, lo main loop in analog, then there is no problem with the delay, quantization, nothing. But you can add additional feature 
for this digital control by making housekeeping I mean for reference voltage transient and there could be some other features also. So, these are the exploration which can help for high frequency PMIC. So, that means the cost silicon area these things matter. Now, we are going to two loop control current mode. In lecture number 75 to 78, we have discussed the mixed signal current mode control. There we need an A to D converter and we need a D to A converter. Now, this may not be affordable for many application because your ADC cost may be high, power consumption, the delay can be high and DAC also may be expensive. So, what we can do? We can take this, you know, this is a sense current. So, we can consider this feedback voltage negative, you have a reference voltage, then we can have this error amplifier compensator and this can be directly compared with your analog comparator V sense, which is a sense inductor current. We have discussed the current sensor gain and this can go to your modulator. From here onward, it is the digital part. And here I would say the reference voltage can come from this can come from a DAC and this can come from a processor command voltage command from processor. The voltage command come come from processor. So, this is my voltage command. This is a digital number, I would say it is a digital number which will be your N ref, right. So, you can make similarly, you can do all this timing, dead time, you can do adaptive dead time. You can if possible, you can use if there is a ramp compensation also, the ramp will be generally generated from a current source charging a capacitor. So, you can also adjust the current reference so that you can also adjust the slope of the ramp. So, this possibilities exist for high frequency current mode control, but this current mode control will have a problem when you go for low due to ratio high frequency application because we know for low due to ratio operation peak current mode control is stable but there can be implementation issue because if you want to compare the inductor current we have discussed that if the due to ratio is very low then this time will be very very small very small i would say it is too small that you cannot use any comparator action it will be too small in that case you need to go for variable frequency because you cannot go for valley, valley current mode control, it is unstable for low due ratio and you need to add adjust uh, add too much of RAM that is not practically recommended. But if you go to constant on time control, we have discussed the constant on time control and we have discussed that mix signal, mix signal constant on time current mode control that we have discussed in this lecture number 97 and we have also synthesized the Verilog code. Now, this modulator that means even if you do not use any analog let us say you use this again you continue your feedback voltage which is coming from here then you have this VREF then you have this compensator then this compensator is actually this is your current sensor V sense it can be minus plus whatever you can take. So, this is your peak voltage and now this is coming from a current sensor gain. Now, this you are going to a I will say adaptive on time. Why I am say adaptive on time? Because this control can be used, we have discussed in lecture number uh, 97, 
and in 100 also. So, if you remember lecture number 100, where we have discussed adaptive on time for DCM. That means, if you are, so this will generate then your QH and QL. And we have considered the multi-mode case study. If you remember, we have discussed thoroughly that um, a lecture number, I think 15, 115 and 116. So, here it is like a peak current base, peak current base PWM, PFM, multi mode control. So, we can keep everything in the analog loop and we can use this dead time where in PWM we can optimize the dead time based for energy optimization. We can adjust the on time so that the switching frequency can be regulated. Okay. All these features can be actually enabled here and under light load condition we can set the current limit according to the uh, you know current acceptable range as is the ripple voltage and then the switching frequency will linearly vary with the load current. So, you can retain all the constant on time feature. So, light load efficiency will be very high. Very high. By adapting the timing, you can achieve the switch, fixed switching to the understudy set. So, this can be a very potential candidate and many commercial products are also coming. In fact, if you go to most of the multi-phase converter, the constant current, constant on time current mode control are interchangeably are using for multi-mode converter. There, we also need to balance number of phases. That means, each phase, you know, they have a constant on time control and you, you need to also generate this adaptive phase thing. So, that there will be ripple cancellation or ripple minimization and all these features can be enabled. Then if you go for space spec spectrum modulation, we discuss with by frequency repeat problem in lecture 1 on 1 and 1 on 2. Even if you keep everything in the analog loop, you can only adjust this person and link with the your short loop so that you can have a bi frequency operation. You do not touch the loop compensator nothing because we show in lecture number 1 on 2 and 1 on, uh, 1 on 2 experimental result that the performance have no effect if uh, in bi frequency if you do not give too much of periodic perturbation for a lower perturbation the spectrum will be spreaded and it will have insignificant impact on the transient response compared to the unmodulated case. So, you can achieve all this space spectrum even without fully digital, you can have a pure analog control with timing control for high frequency PMIs. But again, if you have multiple DCC converter, if you can afford to have ADC because most of the product let us say for mobile phone, communication device. So, any particular manufacturer when they make power management IC, then they make IC for various application. They is like a combo product. So, where you have to drive multiple converter, so you can afford to have a few ADC, then you can optimize the cost and you can achieve many all these feature here. Then digitally assisted multi mode. So, we have discussed multi mode where we are switching between PWM and PSM. So, this can be easily implemented in analog because there are commercial product available where it does not require any digital. So, it can be implemented in analog control very effectively, but we have discussed the mode transition effect, then dead time optimization. So, mode transition, mode transition, then dead time optimization during or dead time optimization. So, this thing we can and light load efficiency, this you can use digital timing block, digital housekeeping very easily and so you do not have to touch the pure analog control, voltage control. Okay. So, this can achieve high efficiency all this optimization. So, that means, this is a only small level of digitization. If you remember that we have discussed in week 1 like you know lecture number 5, lecture 8, 9 that level of digitization. So, it is not necessary we need to fully digitize the loop. We can keep the loop analog for high frequency, low power, low cost solution, but we can play with the timing circuit which are already in digital. So, those things are called digitally assisted multi mode control. 
Then digitally assisted multi mode we have discussed lecture number 115116 which is I would say constant on time constant on time current mode current mode uh, current base I would say current base current base PFM. So, in this lecture we have talked two things under PWM we have discussed uh, we have discussed peak current mode peak current mode control uh, using mix signal and are under PFM we have used peak current mode current base adaptive on time. While we did all this in mix signal, one can keep analog voltage loop, current loop everything analog, but you can combine this multi mode features with timing uh, adaptation date time optimization everything in digital. So, that means the whole lot of digital circuit digital circuit digital circuit consisting of your timing adaptation timing time your just timer adaptation adaptive on time then dead time optimization then you know um, then current lim I mean you can say spectral spreading this can be digitally. So, that is why it is going digitally assisted where you may not need to touch the current and voltage loop which are already in analog. But again if you want to get better feature if you can afford ADC, DAC and if you have multiple such converters this is also a very effective solution. Now I am going data center application here you can perfectly match that in data center let us say there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 phases. So, all this phase has let me each phase has their uh, you know this switch and they also have a driver and they also have a low side current sensing low side current sense. So, this actually each phase is consisting of this low side. So, you need to just give the input to the gate signal only one and you can take the sensing and there is a low current low side current it may not be very fast. Now, we need a centralized digital control and there are many commercial products where the whole thing in digital that means your control logic it is a purely digital control. So, what you can do you can do any type of modulation multi mode control and purely you can go for constant on time control constant on time timing optimization all these features are possible and we have discussed various Verilog HDL based digital control in week 7, 8, 10, 12 which will be useful to understand and develop uh, this kind of product where the full control loop is in digital domain. Next if you go for this MPS solution where we are talking about intelligent phases and the whole loop in digital controller in digital. So, you can here it is offering multi phase for scalable phase up to 10 phase, phase to phase active current balancing, then fast transient digital control. We have discussed about the tuning, large signal tuning, even you can go for trajectory based digital control or charge control based charge uh, capacitor charge based digital control. There are n number of algorithm that can be implemented inside the digital platform. Auto shading, then PM bus communication because for DBS application and other application. So, we have discussed week 10 and 12 lot of Verilog HDL based digital control which can be useful to come up with such, such digital controller for multi phase converter. 
Then this is another von Infineon where flexible phase it is also a digital control solution where you know again it is a multi phase you can have a nonlinear control for very fast transient all this can be possible in digital domain, but we are not touching the power stage which are in analog. So, week 10 to 12 we have multiple HDL code we have developed which may be useful to try to come up with uh, or, um, I, you know solution for multi phase digital controller. Then there are another application for envelope tracking where if you are talking about 5G communication you know then ADAS we need a very high speed uh, power supply for envelope tracking where the envelopes will change drastically and particularly you can have a very high peak to power high peak to average power in 5G and for such application you need to come up with alternative topology and pe people are going by switch capacitor based architecture where there are multiple switch cap their get signal and the control algorithm the tracking application. So, the digital control you may not need to sense all the switch uh, switch cap voltage. So, you can use some estimated algorithm and different digital control to get very fast super fast transient uh, for the envelope tracking application and there are many commercial product which we are not sure whether they are using digital, but some of them are using digital or some may be using some digitally assisted analog control. So, whatever we learn in week 2 architecture as well as week 10 to 12 all the digital HDL code those will be uh, useful to develop either digitally assisted envelope tracking power supply or fully digital or mixed signal solution. So, in summary we have discussed key digital control architecture and PMIC implementation aspect. We have talked about broad application of digital PMIC examples of digital control for data uh, server applications and then examples of digital control for envelope tracking application. So, this will give a glimpse of you know how this course what are the concept we learn can be used to come up with high frequency PMIC either by simple housekeeping digital with pure analog control loop or it can be mixed signal or it can be digital based on the requirement of the number of converter, power level, switching frequency, cost, silicon area all these thing you know. So, there can be various tire of product the premier quality product where you need more sophisticated control digital control, but if you come up with a cost effective solution market then you may have to go for digitally assisted thing. So, this concept in this course and the HDL code I hope will be useful to come up with many commercial IC in future or explore the idea and one can very easily do the FPGA prototyping for the uh, idea validation and rapid development of the digital IC or PMIC. That is it for today. Thank you very much.